Good morning. Welcome to Let's Get Growing Facebook Live. It's a typical October morning. Nice and cool. We're going to get a bit of rain maybe today. We have had a one very light frost, which is amazing. Um, things are still looking really good. But <coughs> it is time to start thinking next spring. So here we are. We haven't quite wrapped up this year, but we are already thinking about next spring. So what we're going to be doing this week, Laura, you can just spin a little bit here. <clears throat> we will be taking apart our summer containers. They still look good, so I've been reluctant to uh, pull them out. But now as we're getting nights in the single digits, the potato vines are going to start looking crappy. And I don't want the bananas to get a heavy frost on them. So we'll be digging those out and taking them in. We've gone well into October, so we're just going to skip our fall planters this year and prepare our planters right for winter. So we'll talk about those in a few weeks. Um, but today we're talking about these big containers for next spring. And what are we going to do with them for the spring? This is one of our favorite sort of uh, garden hacks, if you will, um, for doing spring bulbs in containers. If you're in a mild climate, uh, Vancouver, etc., you can do bulbs right into pots. In England, they can do bulbs right into pots. I get a little jealous of that. We have to do a little trick to get really wonderful spring planters uh, featuring spring bulbs. So we hit the garden center yesterday um, to pick up some bulbs. And it's a little late. Um, it's a touch late. You know, selection was getting a little bit lighter than I would have liked, but I think we found a nice mix. Um, what we do with our fall planter, or with our planters for spring. So we did our shopping. We found a beautiful hyacinth in the city of Harlem, gorgeous soft yellow. So we've got some city of Harlem's. We also picked up some Mount Hood daffodils. In addition, we got some uh, there's some more Mount Hoods. We don't need all of these for our one pot. Some Mango Charm uh, tulips. And then just for a little bit of dramatic hint in there, we got a couple of packages of this Allison Bradley tulip as well. So this is going to be our basic mix here. So we'll just set these aside. When we're making up these planters, um, you have to really be thinking about a few things. One, your color scheme, of course. Last year we did a soft blue and soft yellow um, mix, which is not normally what I do. Uh, I tend to be uh, like much stronger, bolder colors. But this soft yellow mix with blues and that was just, it was a stunning mix. It looked so nice for spring. We're going to kind of go that direction again. The next thing you need to think about is when these bulbs are going to bloom. And bulbs can bloom anywhere from early April to late May, depending on the variety and the type. So you have to be careful of that when you're shopping for bulbs for the mixed containers. We want them to bloom all within sort of a three-week period. So you need to keep your bulbs sort of compatible in their bloom time as well as color. So what we usually pick is we pick a hyacinth, a daffodil, Watch that the daffodils are earlier ones, because there are some really late ones, which <laughs> won't work as well. And a single early or 
a triumph tulip. So what we've got is we've got a triumph tulip here. So it's going to be a little later than these, but they should still overlap. And then to be sure we've got some tulip color in there, this one with the burgundy is one called Allison Bradley, and it's a double early. So it for sure will bloom with the hyacinth and the daffodil. And the mango charm will sneak in there maybe slightly later. So that's what you want to look for in your types. Also watch the height. Depends what your containers are, but we <laughs> generally try to keep things under 18 inches uh, for bulbs for containers. Depends a little bit on what you're doing and how big your containers are and things, but we try to keep them a little shorter um, and it keeps them a little more compact when we put them into the container. So once we've got our group picked, and that's our group there, then we start planting. So what we plant them in is we take down our hanging baskets, dump them out, and we're going to use our hanging baskets to plant into. So this is an 11 inch basket, 12 inch basket, 10 inch basket, whatever you use. Find one that fits your container because the basket, the pot, is going to go right into your planter next spring. These pots are going to go into these planters. Laura, can you see these planters when you're turned like yep. These pots are going to go into these planters <laughs> right where the banana is at the moment. So right in the center. So we need to make sure that they're going to fit there, and these do. We use them every year. So to get started, we throw a little bit of soil into the pot, and we're just using a regular triple mix soil. You don't need to be fancy. Whoops. Regular triple mix soil. And we're just going to put a layer a few centimeters thick in the pot and then we're going to take our bigger bulbs and our tallest bulb is these mango charm tulips so we're going to take those mango charms actually I don't even think I need the gloves for this we're going to take those mango charms there's six in a package when you're shopping take a look at the bulbs make sure they're all firm you, know, you can't really handle them individually anymore, so make sure they're all firm, not papery feeling or anything like that. So there's six in this one. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put the six of these um, in the pot. Now... We're going to, uh, this is one of the taller ones, so we're going to keep these a little more towards the middle. So we just push them into the soil that's in the pot. When we plant, we push the tulip as a flat side. We put that facing out. So we're going to push these in, sort of towards the center, but spaced out around the pot. because they're going to be one of our taller things. So there we go, Laura. Can you, I don't know if you can yeah, tip that and see that. Sort of, so there's the idea. Yeah. All right. But we want these to be full. So I'm going to take a second pack of the mango charms. And we're going to put a second pack of mango charms in there. So it kind of nearly fills the bottom first layer. Get these head in the right direction here. And they can be a little random. It's not really that important where they end up going. So we've got our first layer of tulip in there. Then we take a bit more soil
and we're going to just cover those tulips. There we go. We can kind of see the noses of the tulips still <laughs> sitting there. Um, our next plant that's tall will be our Mount Hood daffodils. There's five in a package of these, so we're going to go two packages. And again, sometimes you get the doubles. You may not get flowers off both of these, but you will get flowers off this one. <coughs> when you put them in, try to sort of put them in between the noses of the tulips. But, not a necessity, as the tulips will find their way around the daffodil bulbs. We'll get our daffs all in there. All right, so our daffs are in there on top of our tulips. We're going to put more soil. Actually, I'm going to just, because I've got these few maroon ones, I'm going to put them in at this same level as these daffodils. So we're going to tuck these in, sort of spread them amongst so they, so they all come up mingling together, not in little clumps of each other. You want this to be a nice full pot of bulbs mingling together. So there we go. So we got a little drift of tulips in amongst the daffodils. And don't worry about if the bulbs are touching doesn't matter. You can really pack bulbs into these planters. Uh, the bulbs won't mind and your display will be um, spectacular. So we'll get some more soil in there. Again, we're just going to cover so we can still sort of see the tops of the daffodils. And then we're going to go to our hyacinths. So our hyacinths is a much bigger bulb. There's, uh, what's in the package? Oh, there's five of each, in the, five in the packages, so that's good. There's going to be ten hyacinths. And they're a bigger, paper, bigger bulb. That's okay. One thing about hyacinths, some people can be very sensitive to the hyacinth bulbs and get a bit of a rash or an allergic reaction to the skin of these. So if that happens to you, put gloves on while you're doing it. It doesn't last long, but some people do react to it. So we're going to put these hyacinths in. Again, try to get them between the other bulbs, but it's not really that important. So there we go. There's our hyacinths in there. Now one bulb that I haven't touched yet, and I think I might just sprinkle a few in here for a little bit of an added little splash, and I'll explain why in a minute, is some muscaries or grape hyacinths. Grape hyacinths are a fantastic bulb. They force in pots like this extremely well. If you used just grape hyacinths in these pots, you could actually reuse these pots year after year, and the grape hyacinths just keep getting better and better. So that's something to think about. Often you'll even see just growers doing simply just pots of grape hyacinths packed in tight because they look so spectacular in the spring. And they're a much smaller bulb, so they can be just sort of tucked in anywhere in amongst the hyacinths around the edges of the pot, anywhere like that, get them all mixed in there. <coughs> there we go, and maybe one more over here. All right, so there's our hyacinth layer. 
Now we're going to fill the pot. And again, we're just using triple mix. You don't have to use anything special. Just garden soil even if you if that's all you have. I get the weeds out if you see a weed or two, but anyway. So we're going to fill these right up. Even the overflowing is okay, it doesn't really matter. There we go. So there is our spring bulb pot planted. Now, this is the big step. In our climate, we can't just leave them like this. So we used a hanging basket, remember? We're gonna put the hangers back on that basket. If you want, tie a label to it so you know what the heck you've planted, or at least your color scheme. Then you're going to take this plant, or this basket, and we're going to take it over to a part of the garden where we do some annual planting, and we're going to bury it in the garden. We're going to bury it in a part of the garden that we can get to in the spring, an area that kind of warms up fairly early. If you put it in a shady spot, the ground may stay frozen for too long, and you might never get it out. Um, we put the hangers on because the first year we did this, we did it in pots, buried all the pots. Then we had a heck of a time finding those pots in the spring. So we bury these. We're going to bury these in the garden, probably about three or four inches deeper than the top of the pot. And we're just going to put the bulbs away for a nice snug rest in the winter. They're going to start growing right away. We're going to water these in so we're not... Uh, putting them into dry soil into the ground. We're going to soak them, put them into a hole in the ground, bury them with the hanger still hanging, sticking up out of the ground so we know where the baskets are in the spring. Okay? Come spring, and we'll show you this when we dig them up in the spring. Come spring, we're going to take these planters out just as the bulbs are starting to wake up and transfer them to our spring planters. Okay, now, the other step, what do we do with the rest of the spring planter once this is put in? Usually, if your pot fits <laughs> your planter, great. And that's all you have to do. You just want to do a mix of bulbs, fantastic. We usually put these into bigger pots so we have extra space. So what we've already done is we've already picked our pansies. We've picked the colors we want that will complement this mix of bulbs for next spring. So as soon as the pansies hit the table in the garden center next spring, we'll go out, we'll grab those, we'll get the colors we want that are gonna mix well with our planting. Um, what did we pick, Laura? We picked a nice soft yellow. Yep. That'll go with the daffodil and the high and the hyacinth, and then we picked. Um, I think it's called Inspire Pink Shades, and it goes sort of from this dark to sort of a softer sort of mauvey pink. So it'll be a nice little bolder color splash in with these colors, but it'll match this tulip perfectly well. In addition to the pansies that we're going to fill the pots with around the edges. We're going to put in colorful lettuce. Lettuce is such a great plant for spring containers because it's cold hardy. A little bit of a late frost doesn't bother it. A little bit of late snowfall won't bother it. Um, there's some really great foliage shapes uh, in a lot of the leaf lettuces, the great oak leaf ones, um, ruffly ones like the lolo heads. Um, and there's great colors burgundies, speckled, chartreuse. All these colors can be had in lettuces. And then once your spring planters are done and you're going to switch over to summer planters, you then just harvest all those lettuce and pansy flowers and eat them for dinner. So it's a great multi-purpose way to get your spring containers done. 
So we're going to do the one. We'll finish up the others. We'll plant them out into the garden for the winter. And then next spring, on another show, we will get them out of the garden and plant them into the containers and show you the second half of doing fantastic spring planters with bulbs. So Jeff, Sophie is surprised, so she can't believe how many bulbs are in that pot. There's a lot of bulbs in this pot. And is that for dramatic effect? You know what? My containers need to be full, uh, so I pack them in. You know, you could do less. It's fine. You know, if you wanted to just do, you know, 15 tulips in there, if you wanted to do one package of each, you could do that too. I want super pow. I want lots and lots of foliage color because for my spring containers this is what i'm relying on for the wow factor in the spring containers um so i pack them in yeah we put in what did we put in we put in 10 16 uh 26 and uh 20 what 28 uh 38 we put 48 bulbs in that pot, and that is going to be a spectacular show for a very long time next season. How do you, once you plant them in the ground, how do you protect them from squirrels? If squirrels are an issue, you could put some uh, chicken wire over these pots if you needed to, if they were really bad. Um, quite honestly, if you plant these deep enough like any bulb and firm the soil in really well then water the soil in then cover it with some mulch or some leaves more often than not the squirrels won't even know you planted anything there and will leave them alone I can't guarantee that for all squirrels but for bulbs in general deep planting no loose soft soil around cover them with leaves or mulch right away get them watered in well so the ground is settled squirrels dig generally where it's easy to dig and if you've left it light and fluffy and you didn't put your bulbs more than a couple of inches deep you could have squirrels digging them up so that's why i say we're going to plant these pots you know probably this deep in the ground quite deep <coughs> then we're going to water them in we're going to throw leaves and mulch over them the squirrels won't even know the ground was disturbed and that's the key to keep your squirrels out throw some chicken manure on them if you want whatever else works a little bit of scoot uh, you can spray on the surface before you replanted them if you needed to but that should be fine and Dan wants to know if the bulbs are thrown out after blooming next spring so the beauty is is that um if you treat these bulbs well, so as the foliage, you know, when the flowers finish, as the foliage is still there and growing, fertilize them. And then what we do is we take these pots, um, sometimes right away, sometimes not till the next autumn, and we plant them out in the garden just the way they are. And then you get these wonderful mixes of, of bulbs in the garden. So they don't go to waste. They do all get replanted. Um, and like I say, if you feed them well in the spring stages while they're growing, the bulbs, the bulbs are fine and can rebloom for next year. I've never tried keeping them in the pots to, to redo them that way, other than grape hyacinths. Grape hyacinths will do that easily. But uh, we've put them in the garden every year, and then you just end up with a nice ongoing mix of bulbs in the garden. Is there a name for this process? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's a name for this process. I've seen it called lasagna planting. Um, you know, if you looked up bulb lasagna planting, you might find um, the similar idea. And the, the neat thing about it is this is for containers. But you know what? If you have a small garden area, you could do this same idea with bulbs in your garden. For bulbs in the garden... I would take an early, a mid-season, and a late and plant them right on top of each other and you will have a succession of bulbs 
coming up in the same area for weeks through the spring. There is no rule that says you have to put these five tulips here and then these five tulips over here and then these five daffodils between them. You can layer early tulips, mid-season tulips, late tulips, all in the same you know, little space in the garden and get fantastic results for a very long season. Sophie would like to know, on a, on a different topic, when is the best time to harvest parsnips? She has great luck with planting seeds in the late fall. Parsnips? We will harvest our parsnips as long as we can dig. Meaning that our ground is nowhere near frozen yet. We've had one light frost. We might dig some now. We might dig some a month from now. We might dig some two months from now. Until the ground freezes up, that's when we'll harvest our parsnips. Um, just before sort of ground frees up. The beauty of that is, is that the cold weather makes them sweeter. So the longer you leave them in the ground, the sweeter they are. We have actually even harvested in March, as soon as we could redig the ground in the spring, and got great parsnips uh, as well. So cold season crop, don't ever forget that. And Jeff, one of the Let's Get Growing um, listeners sent in a question about what can be planted under a black walnut tree. Yeah, the black walnut uh, issue is, is a tricky one, and uh, we'll try to keep it in a short, quick answer. There are lots of things you can plant under a black walnut. Now, black walnuts, <laughs> um, like all big trees, are water-hungry, nutrient-hungry, and it can be difficult to establish plants under any big tree. Now, the black walnuts have another little added bonus of having juglone in their system and exuding this juglone chemical out into the soil around where they grow. Juglone is an interesting thing. It basically helps the plant not to get overrun by other plants so it can get more nutrients for the tree. Now, generally, it really inhibits seeds from being from germinating and from very young plants from really getting rooted well. But any big tree will do that, too, so keep that in mind. Um, the biggest key to getting things under a black walnut or any tree is when you plant them, you have to look after them. You have to water them well, keep them well fed until they're established. Putting in a bunch of stuff under any big tree and then walking away will give you terrible results. But there are lots of plants that will grow under trees if given the proper initial care after planting. Now, for the black walnuts, yes, some things just won't tolerate uh, the conditions they provide, especially with the added bit of, of juglone uh, in the ground. Um, but there are lots of sort of woodland ground covers that will. Creeping geraniums, for example, generally are fine under black walnuts. Um, uh, sweet woodruff is another ground cover that works well. Uh, I'm sure other woodland wildflowers, early wildflowers, would probably do fine. Um, when you get into perennials, um, daylilies will tolerate, um, bee balm will tolerate. Uh, I'm pretty sure hostas are fine under there as well. Um, you get into other shrubs, smaller shrubs, because again, when you've got big trees, you generally need that shrub understory layer before you get to the perennials. Um, dogwoods, viburnums are two groups to look at uh, in particular. Um, so there are lots of choices. There are even some vegetables that are very tolerant of the juglone and will work under a uh, black walnut tree too, or, or in the vicinity of a black walnut tree. Because you're not just planting under it necessarily, because the roots are going out into the ground all around the tree, so you have those areas to worry about. But um, there's a handful of choices 
for you. But again, like any other tree, it's all about aftercare, after planting to get them established. Do we have any other questions today, Laura? No, that's it. All right. We'll wrap it up for today. Uh, keep an eye on the website. We'll have our trip information for next year up very, very shortly. Um, we're just finalizing uh, some locations and finalizing some pricing. Uh, the hotels and things in Europe don't always give us pricing early, so we have to sort of hold off and, and wait for that. So <clears throat> watch our website for that, masonhousegardens.com. And we'll see you next week here on Let's Get Growing Live on Facebook. Um, if you have questions through the week, send them to Let's Get Growing at ckdo.ca, and we'll answer them here while we do some garden activity uh, in the meantime as well. So we'll leave you there. Uh, happy gardening. Get out. It's still a great time to garden. There's the weather's fantastic. So. See you next time on Let's Get Growing Facebook Live.